A very common insect in most streams is the mayfly. And that's why we like to fish a lot of mayfly patterns. The one I'm going to tie here is the is a very heavy mayfly pattern we use pretty much year round in, in deep water, deep fast water. I designed it because it's extra heavy and gets down to the zone where a lot of our fish are, three to six feet of water. A mayfly uh, nymph will live on the bottom of a river uh, and when it's ready to hatch will release the rock and swim to the surface of the river at which point it will hatch and fly off as an adult. During the transition from the bottom of the river to the surface is when it becomes trout food. So we need to get that fly to the bottom and in our rivers they're quite deep, four to six feet, quite fast flowing. So we're going to tie it with a 3.8 to 4 millimeter tungsten bead, the original with gold. We've got some 0 0.015 lead free wire uh, for the body underneath the pheasant tail that we'll be tying with. We have some, again, 7T denier UTC fluorescent fire orange thread, some extra small copper wire, and a nice piece of pheasant tail which is a great natural color and works well to represent the mayfly nymph. And finally, uh, a little bit of CDC uh, for a wing collar part of the fly. These feathers, when they enter the water, will tend to grab air and create life below the surface. So I like to integrate uh, CDC into all of my natural nymphs, pheasant tails, uh, uh, caddis fly patterns, things like that. The beads we use on these jig hooks are slotted so that they can make the bend when you're, when you're putting the bead onto the hook. A bead that does not have a slot will not fit onto a jig hook very well. So whenever you buy beads for jig hooks, make sure that there's a slot on the bead. With this fly in particular, we are going to tie in some, some lead-free wire. And I want to create a cone shape so that it's shaped like the actual nymph. And to do that, I'm going to just begin tying in by wrapping the wire around the hook 11 times, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. And I keep feeding that up to the that wire that's wrapped up to the bead to pack it in. And that's the eleventh turn. And you can see there's about eleven turns on there. And now I'm gonna put five back. So one, two, three, four. Five. And then I'll break the wire. That creates a slight ice cream cone shape, which is integral to building the body of the fly because there isn't a lot of material on top of that when you make it. Then I like to take a little bit of super glue to maintain the lead wire in place or the lead free wire in place. And I'll just put that on there and let it dry a little bit. I'm not too worried about how dry it gets, I just want to make sure that it's in there holding that in place. You can see it gets a bit of a cone shape as that glue is on there. And I'll tie in behind the lead
Then I like to cover the lead with the, with the thread. It's actually lead free wire. I keep saying lead, but that's just because it all used to be lead. Now it's not. Any extra glue, just take your, just take it off of there. Don't need it. Perfect. Spin a couple times, cover it all up. So if your fly blows apart while you're fishing, it's actually okay. I've caught a lot of fish with a red underbelly on the uh, on the fly when the pheasant tail begins to fall apart, and and with the use of the copper wire in the build of the fly, sometimes that pheasant tail will break apart and it'll act more like legs, probably something still alive. So don't stop fishing this fly once it starts falling apart. Sometimes it actually works a lot better. So now that you've built the body, we're gonna pull off probably eight pieces of pheasant tail. Make sure they're lined up as nicely as possible. And you want it to stick out the back of the hook about the same length as the hook bend. Let's tie that in one, two turns. Hold that there. And then we need our copper wire. And extra small is, is great, doesn't add weight, just enough to keep the material on the fly. One turn there, bring your thread to the front of the fly. And now we will wrap the pheasant tail, touching turns. I just hold my finger against the pheasant tail on the return to the front of the fly with each turn when I get to the top I will tie that off one two one two and trim and you can really start to see the cone shape of that of that fly and then because I wrapped this way with the pheasant tail, I'm gonna wrap the opposite with the copper wire. About five turns. One, two, three, four. And on the fifth turn, I'll do two behind the bead. Wrap it on either side of the wire and wiggle the wire back and forth, it just breaks. All right, and finally, we're gonna put on some CDC. So I just take the CDC feather, straighten those CDC fibers out a little bit, and I'm just gonna peel off one side and the other side. Line them up so that they come to the back of the fly. One turn, two turns, fold them back. One, two turns. It's okay, they break off a little bit. And whip finish on one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Tie that off. Trim anything that looks out of place. And your fly is now complete.
these fibers here will grab air bubbles when that fly sinks, which will give it a little bit more life underwater. And the added weight will allow it to sink super fast, which is the goal of this fly. Get it down, get it in front of the fish, and keep your line nice and tight so you can feel every change that occurs during the presentation. And set the hook every time that fly stops moving.